everybody welcome to my channel and in today's video we are building a 3d printer this printer may look like a prusa mini but it's not i designed all of the components from scratch in fusion 360 and i'll take you through the process this video or this project will span over multiple videos purely because i will not be able to fit all of it in one video so i hope you enjoy we start off with a Z and X axis assembly. First thing I did was to install the lead screw nut. I just basically press it in. You don't have, you, you can't yet uh, fasten it with any screws because you need to put the lead screw in first and make sure that everything aligns before you actually tighten it down. After that, you can install the nuts into the nut traps and that will allow us to connect the other two opponents on both sides one side is will be for the extruder and the other side will be for the x-axis motor as you can see it has a little foot where you attach the end stop so just make sure that the orientation is correct before you start tightening all the screws and yeah so once once you've installed all the screws then you can basically just tighten it down um, as you can see I haven't yet installed the the rails for for the x-axis this is just to get the assembly right um, in another video i'll show you that part um, so once everything is assembled we will be able to go on to the next step putting the extruder together is pretty simple this extruder was also designed from ground up it's a basic concept so all it is is just got the base and then there's a little door that you can attach onto one of the, the bolts that goes into the motor and it will use that as a hinge and this also serves as a tensioner to tension the, the filament onto the motor extruder gear then we also have a bolt that will basically compress the door onto the filament um, you, you may have to put in a little spring so that it's um, so it's not a direct you'll see that the door has got a little gap in there to sort of weaken the plastic and we use a 625z bearing that will basically just slide into the door like that and then we have a five millimeter bolt it just basically threads in and you'll see on the sides of the bearing there is two little spaces that's part of the actual inspection door that allows the door not to to sort of squash the the bearing and it still allows it to spin freely so you don't have to tighten this down very hard um, you just leave it in you just put the bolt in make sure it's tight and that's it you can just hand tighten it and then we attach the motor the first screw that I'm putting in is the one that actually acts as the hinge for the inspection door once we assemble that, then there's just two more bolts. It only makes use of three of the four corners of, of the motor that um, you don't have to use. You can actually even use only two and it's still plenty strong. So that's how you assemble it. Um, there's one more screw actually. So we'll put in that screw and then we have an extruder it's very simple and it's quite effective it works quite nicely so then we're going to have to install the bowden tubes or the bowden tube guides um, or uh, it's actually called bowden connectors um, in this uh, example i'm just putting in a piece of ptfe tube it's not the final tube but um, there's a problem on this where i had to actually glue those bowden um, connectors into place so I'll quickly fast forward the video so you don't have to do and watch that and then we have to actually remove the tubes because I've got some glue on it so if you're gonna do it exactly like I did then it's a good time to actually remove the tubes because otherwise they may just get in there and get stuck PTFE shouldn't stick to epoxy in any case but just in case so that's it and it will basically fit on to the X Z assembly like that. Eight UU linear bearings. 
they they just pretty much press fits into place so they are a bit tight and if you press hard enough you'll get them in but um, sometimes they do get a little bit stuck and then you may have to whack them in with a, a rubber mallet and um, yeah I'll show you where I got stuck so over there you can see it's got a little bit of a lip sticking out and that I'll correct with a rubber mallet I don't think you should use a hard hammer because you might just end up damaging the bearings and also when you hit it you should hit it flat head on so that you don't so the corner of the hammer doesn't actually go into the bearing part so you'll see that this one will actually get stuck a little bit and then we're gonna just hit, hit it with a rubber mallet so it's time for the rubber mallet so let's see so we had to I had to just hit it in as you can see I'm hitting on the corner which is not a good way of doing it because you could damage the bearing on the inside and I hit it a little bit too far but it's easy to correct you can just correct it with a hammer from the other side and once you've assembled everything it looks like this so it's actually ready so before you tighten the lead screw nuts down you have to put in the lead screw and it should spin freely so as you can see it spins nice and smoothly and if I just leave it it will run down just by gravity I have to obviously split this project into multiple videos I don't have all the components so I couldn't make one big video in any ways so yeah please be on the lookout for the new one click the little bell to get updates don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to smile as well have an awesome day everybody cheers